Hello gals, guys, or otherwise, this is Rich, and welcome to another Witchy Book Club. Again, we're going through the Inner Temple of Witchcraft. Uh, this is Chapter 4, and uh, yeah, let's just get on into it, because this is a uh, packed chapter. Let me set my pen over there. Ignore all this stuff going on behind me. Uh, I still have my stuff out from whenever I did the video on Holy Water. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and go back and check that out for Witchy Wednesday. And excuse me, uh, some little jelly bean over here, um, her and I were doing a little snuggling, and uh, I got some fur on me, so yeah, you may see me do this, and anyway, y'all know how it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep this stuff out for... Uh, Sunday, and I'm actually going to make some holy water because I am out, out, out of holy water. So, anyway, I will leave a link in the description below on where you can find this. I have a link for Amazon, so I will leave that there if you wish to buy it, if you haven't already bought it. Uh, I do encourage you guys to go ahead and get a copy of uh, if you can, get it from a local witchy shop or um, a local bookstore or something like that. And you can also get it through a library, interlibrary loan and whatnot. So if you have those available, definitely take advantage of them um, if that's something that you would like to do. Otherwise, you can sit back and relax and we will go through Chapter 4. And I am going to be sipping on my pet. Pepsi, uh, hashtag not sponsored, uh, wish I was, and uh, in the meantime, while you're waiting for me to take my drink, go ahead and click that subscribe button below and hit the thumbs up, or uh, if, if you're liking the series, and um, hit the little bell notification, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, who knows anymore, so, just going to go ahead and get in it, this chapter is called The Witch's Path, and I like how he starts off these chapters. He always starts off the chapters very strong. He has a good uh, starting point in the chapters. So I think this might be a running theme throughout the chapters that I just like completely fall in love with the uh, beginning uh, sentence of the chapters. He says, The witch's path is not an easy road to walk. And this is so true. Um... If you have been practicing for a while, um, you'll know that this is true, that not always is there a capability of people understanding or um, being supportive of this type of uh, practice, this type of path. Some people call uh, the path that you're on, the, your path. I call it a practice because it's something that you continually practice at. Um, some minor variations in terminology for me and others, but same meaning, basically. Um, anyway, uh, further on down the same paragraph, and I'm going to be quoting a lot from this one. Uh, life of a witch is very joyous, filled with never-ending study and exploration. Witches learn many disciplines to apply uh, their craft. One must be dedicate a dedicated student, but also have the passions, or the passion, the fire, necessary to live life as a witch. Witchcraft is constantly adapting and evolving, calling creative, daring people to it. So, there's a couple things in this. Uh, continuing, continuing to learn is, of course, something that if you've been practicing for a while, you know that you never know at all. And that's one reason that I do these videos is because I am so into learning and expanding my knowledge and whatnot. And whenever I learn something new or whenever I uh, venture onto something new, I you know, pass it on to you guys. And uh, I love watching videos like that whenever other people do them too, of things that they've either known for years that, you know, I may not have ever thought of. Or whenever somebody, uh, you know, 
puts up a video of what they're currently studying. It, it's amazing, and I love it. Um, and he's also right in this, that it's constantly adapting and evolving. Uh, a few years ago, you didn't hear much about Christian witches, but it's becoming more and more of a thing. I don't know if it's because I'm doing the videos. I don't know if it's because other people are doing the videos and I haven't seen their videos yet. I know there are a few of us out there on YouTube that are doing these videos, but all in all, it's it wasn't a huge thing. And I see a couple more books coming out here and there. Uh, on Christian witchcraft and Christian Wicca and Christopaganism and whatnot, but not as many as I'd like. But definitely, there is a uh, a ball starting to roll on it. Um, yeah, some of them I've gotten. One I've done a, a review on, and I thought it was terrible. But she's coming out with an updated version. I'm kind of leery about getting it. Anyway. Uh, if you watch my book reviews, yeah, you'll know which one I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, I, I hear that she's come out with a, with a new one and kind of leery about it, but I will probably end up getting it, reading it, and then letting you know, all know exactly what I think. So I didn't hold any punches last time. I probably won't even hold any punches this time. So anyway might just do that let me know in the comments below if you would like to see an update on that one um anyway who's this uh okay never mind uh twitter alert i am on twitter if you guys don't know um in in the uh description below is my twitter handle and all that stuff at witchy richie witchy with a y richie with an ie anyway we're moving on because this is going to be a long video and I really don't want to edit anything out. Um, so, yeah, that's where we stand. Um, he also says one must be aware of internal feelings and conflicts to be a, a master of the soul and motives. So true. Knowing how you feel about something and knowing what really gets your goat about something is integral into doing... Um, a magical practice as I know it um, you know your mileage will vary but knowing why you're doing what you're doing is very important and if you're doing something out of anger and out of um, kind of a, a way of getting back at somebody and just off the cuff you may not like the results uh, so, yeah, definitely have a purposeful act and be able to keep your emotions in check. Um, being a master of, uh, of the soul and of motives. So, I, I really like that he points this out. Later on down in that second paragraph at the bottom of, the, of page 59... Uh, most important of all, a perspective which must be fully grounded in the real world. We dive into the spiritual, but not the, not to the determent, or, but not to the detriment. If I can read and talk at the same time, it would be great. Um, but not to the detriment of our daily lives and responsibilities, because we deal with the magical realms we must always know how to return to the physical magic is not an escape from reality and this is so true there are people who like me um i'm an introvert i love being uh you know cloistered in my own little space like this little space here as um messy as this space has become over the past you know, a couple months and whatnot with me moving things around and, and all that, my witchy space is becoming a little cluttered, a little, you know, but, but it's my home type of thing. Um, it, it's dangerous for introverts, I think, especially to fully cloister into that, um, that spiritual world where you're kind of a hermit, kind of a recluse and you, fully embrace the spiritual but you lose yourself 
physically and you don't interact physically with anybody. I'll tell you what, if I could spend the day reading, uh, writing and watching and practicing witchcraft all day long and, um, you know, strengthening my own spirituality all day long and, you know, be self-sustained, I would, I would definitely do it. It would, it would be like a dream of mine. However, I also have to realize and keep that balance of the, the physical, you know, the physicality of going to work and interacting with human beings instead of just spiritual entities and whatnot. It is important. Uh, on the next page, seekers are often drawn to witchcraft because of the allure and because of the allure, the mystery and power expecting life to be easy after proclaiming themselves a witch. Not the case. Uh, well, it is the case for people to, to have that allure, but that is not necessarily what you're going to get. Uh, I don't think I've ever really done many uh, pieces of spell work for my own personal gain. Uh, I've, I haven't really done any money spells that were really uh, like like a win the lottery type or, you know, constant flow of money type of thing. It's always been something like I want to have that uh, differing I, I, of the did I earn it or did I get it magically. And even though, you know, you have magic and why not use it, um, and I'm trying to get through that in my own mind, I have very rarely in the past done a uh, spell work for me or for uh, my own personal gain of sorts. But, yeah, I can definitely see that that would be the allure to it. However, it is not exactly what you get. So... If the path is new to you, this is the second paragraph down on uh, chap or on page 60. If the path is, is new to you, stop and think for a moment. Why do you want to study this material? Do you want to belong or do you want to become a pagan, witch, Wiccan, or other magical practitioner? If so, why? What is appealing about it? Have you looked at other spiritual paths and traditions? And this is a great series of questions. If you didn't catch them all, rewind the 10, 20 seconds, whatever it is, and copy these down and answer these questions. This is part of the homework that I would I would give if we were actually in a, a, a physical book club setting is I would have this as a handout. I'd be like, are these the reasons that you want to be a witch or a magical practitioner? If they are the reasons, why? Um, I learned from my friend Annie, um, and I, I, Annie, you know what? If you're watching this, I seem to not be able to say your name without smiling. Um, her, her energy is just contagious. Uh, whenever you, if you ever have the chance to meet Annie, it, it is a magnificent experience and one that I will always cherish. Anyway, um, the one thing that I learned from Annie, from her, just her videos alone, is knowing the why behind what you do. And that has been a game changer in my practice. So much that every single thing I do needs to have a reason. If it doesn't have a reason, it probably doesn't belong. Um, and that goes into doing spell work. That goes into... Um, if I'm going to say a prayer, why am I saying this prayer? Um, I talked about doing the rosary last week and you know, there are different types of prayer and I'm going to be doing a video on prayer in the future because somebody requested doing a prayer uh, video if I haven't already done that. So I will be doing that video in the future. Uh, I believe it's going to be in the February lineup if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, which is not always the case, but I think it's, I think that's the case in, at, at this point. I'm going to lower that down because it's getting annoying and I'm trying to read over it. Anyway, um, 
you know, knowing the that you can say a prayer is one thing, but knowing why you're saying that prayer and what it all really means is a completely different thing. And um, yeah, uh, I really like to answer the question of why do you want these things? And then he goes on. If you decide you want to study witchcraft and become a witch, look at the qualities long practicing witches have. Self-awareness, respect, responsibility, and love for life. Enough said. Um, I, I can't really elaborate much more on this. Um, knowing who you are and um, how you personally will react to things uh, with the self-awareness, respect, um, knowing that, like, how to respect a fellow human being is paramount, especially whenever you're talking in the witchy pagan community, where there are differences from one practice to another, and sometimes we just have to sit there and say, you know what, that's how you practice it, and I am fine with that, and it works for you, but me personally can't do it. Like, um, people who, and the, this is a little tangent of mine, people who will say that an athame is the symbolism of air. Absolutely. In some practices, that is your air symbolism. In my practice, I, I, I don't see it. I am a welder and machinist, in, you know, or have been a welder and machinist in the military for the last almost 15 years. To me, metal is forged in fire. It has nothing to do with air except tempering. Um, but it is forged in fire, so to me, that is very much a fire element symbol. Um, the wood of a, of a wand... Um, you know, it is more airy and more light and flowing and, and whatnot to me than an athame ever will be. And you can have these arguments and these, uh, these discussions, you know, ma make them kind discussions. There's no reason whatsoever to argue um, and be belligerent about your point of whether or not an athame is fire or air. None at all. But at the end of the day, the mutual respect of one another saying, hey, you know, this is how I see it. I know this isn't how you see it, but you know what? I, I understand and I get it. You know, it works for you. So that the respect part is huge. Responsibility, taking responsibility for what you do, especially, especially, Especially if you're going to be a magical practitioner, uh, knowing that what you put out there, you are going to cause a ripple effect of some sort. And knowing that you have that responsibility and taking responsibility for that is huge. Um, and love for life. Uh, not doing anything that is a detriment to somebody else's life itself. Um, is huge. Um, not only love for life of human beings, but also the little creatures like Little Miss Jelly over here. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Your life matters, too. Yep. Anyway. You want to say hi? Say hi. No? Okay. So camera shy. Anyway. He goes on in the next paragraph. Most importantly, a, a witch in the, in the world must be self-aware. This means practicing some, of, some form of introspection. It could be meditating, daily ritual, writing a journal, or hiking out in nature. Anything will do, as long as it stills the mind and allows you to reflect on yourself and your relationship with creation. Very important. And I'm noticing here that uh, just something that's distracting me. Um, I have like a purple outline there. I didn't color my hair. That's just the way the light's bouncing. Don't know why. Anyway. So if that's distracting to you, it's distracting to me. 
Um, moving on to the next paragraph. Self-awareness stimulates a desire for respect and self-esteem. And going down a from that sentence to the third sentence in that paragraph, Wiccan rituals are based on a concept of perfect love and... Uh, I'm sorry. Wiccan rituals are based on the concept of perfect love, what others call unconditional love. If you cannot love yourself, you'll never generate a feeling of perfect love for ritual. Love for self is something that I still struggle with. It is something that, you know, I don't have the nicest body. I know I don't have the nicest voice. Um, my eyesight's atrocious. My, uh, my hair is unruly sometimes. I mean, whenever I get it cut short, it just does its thing. Um, you know, I have this, you know, the man boobs and I have the, the gut and everything. I, you know, not everything is how I want it. Self-love, uh, is something that I struggle with and I'm going to be completely honest about that. I don't always love the way I look and the way I feel and it is something that I can change. It's something that I have control over. But it's also something that I have to respect about myself and, you know, kind of love about my individuality. And it's, it's hard to do. I'm, and I'm just going to leave that at that. Excuse me. <coughs> okay. Going on to <clears throat> page 61, part of respect for yourself and your world is responsibility. Thoughts, words, and actions are vehicles for power, but very few people take full responsibility for all three. <clears throat> Let me go through those again. Thoughts, words, and actions. And few people take responsibility for all three. With the development of, of magical ability, your thoughts can manifest as easily as your words and actions. So a witch must be careful about manifesting harmful thoughts. This isn't as easy as it sounds, but it is an essential step to empowerment. As your power grows, you must take full responsibility for it or do not seek it do not seek it out in the first place yes a thousand times yes if you are not willing or in the position in your life to take responsibility for your thoughts and the thoughts that you manifest of of people or things or events um, if you're not able to control your words and and your actions, it's you you probably should not be yet partaking in a magical practice. <clears throat> Things can happen accidentally, and you, you're still responsible for it. <clears throat> um, I want to speak a little bit about words. <clears throat> I have or had a friend uh, who in the past week or so compared me to a white supremacist. He, he said, oh, you guys have a lot in common. I said, excuse the fuck out of you. I said, you know, you're, you're a piece of shit for saying that is pretty much what I told him. I said, he and I have absolutely zero in common except for being human beings. And I barely classify him as that. He states, this is all over Facebook, by the way. He states that he has apologized for me, but an apology isn't good enough. He erases his comment or his original comment, which took away the whole thread. So, I never saw the apology, for one. 
and he's come back to, back at me saying, well, you don't, I guess you don't think an apology is good enough. I said, no, your true colors have shown whenever you said those things to me, that you even thought I was kind of like a white supremacist. So therefore, you weren't in check of your words. So words have power. Um, and whenever you say something like that, it is showing me how you truly feel about me. And this is somebody who is not a magical practitioner. And I don't think ever would be. But it is people like that that are not able to control their their words, their thoughts, their emotions, their actions, um, who don't think through things like that before they cast, and they end up getting themselves into a lot of trouble. Um, so if that is you, and you're not at that point yet where you can keep, you know, a, an, an initial knee-jerk reaction to something where you cannot keep it in check uh, you might not want to embark on uh, a magical practice of course study it I would never begrudge somebody from studying it I wouldn't practice it until you've mastered uh, the way your thoughts are formed and um, what your intention is behind those thoughts is the main point I'm getting at with that he goes on to say, Responsibility also manifests in your personal life. As you interact with the world, witches conduct themselves with integrity if they choose to aid others through divination, healing, spiritual counsel, spiritual counsel or a helping spell or ritual. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, I can definitely tell you I've done divination, um, spiritual counseling, and uh, helping spells or, or rituals for others, uh, as well as myself. Um, I am not a healer type, and that's just, um, or at least I'm not yet. Uh, I, that's never felt like my calling. I know some people out there are Reiki practitioners, and they, they do their thing, and I am not attuned to Reiki, and I don't know nearly enough about Reiki to embark on that yet. So maybe in the future I will. But I have definitely uh, given blessings, and I've definitely uh, thrown the hammer down uh, on people that, um, that needed it because it was what was called for at the time. Last paragraph of page 61, the most important quality of a witch is a healthy dose of love for life. You must seek to enjoy the pleasures of life on all levels. A key to such enjoyment is a good sense of humor. This is why I chose this. Laughter is the best form of magic. A witch who can't laugh at himself or herself is taking things a bit too seriously. The world is a place of wonder and magic. Be focused on your task, but not so focused that you do not enjoy the ride. And might I say that's um, part of the reason why I'm not editing these videos as much. Because I've taken humor in the fact that, you know what? I screw up, and I screw up a lot. And if you ask me to read something... I'll probably screw it up even more <laughs> on camera. And it's the fact that I'm getting into that place where I can laugh at the things that I do um, that are weird and kind of kooky and make me absolutely nervous. But I'm willing to put myself out there for it because, you know, it is what it is. If you haven't seen my uh, Christmas Eve uh, season's blessings video where I read Twas the Night Before Christmas. Let me just say that 
showing up on camera in a onesie lizard outfit or dragon outfit or whatever animal that's supposed to be is not something that I would have ever, ever thought of doing, you know, a couple years ago. Never in my wildest dream would I have thought to put something like that up online and have it part of my, um, my YouTube videos. But I think I've finally gotten to that point where it's like, okay, unless I'm, you know, botching up what I'm trying to say way too much, I'm not going to edit my videos as much because it doesn't need to be. This is who I am. This is as if you were sitting down having a cup of coffee or a Pepsi, hashtag not sponsored, um, with me, you know, this is what you would get, is me sitting here being a little weird and taking a little bit too long to get a thought out. <laughs> anyway, turning to page 62 in the first paragraph, about three or so sentences down, uh, traditionalists, uh, traditionalists believe that it takes a witch to make a witch, meaning you must find, uh, and study with a witch. After a period of training, you are formally initiated. Those harken back to the older meaning, back to the older meaning of witch, as wise one, believe you believe you take a pagan faith and practice it, learning the craft and your personal path. After amassing knowledge and wisdom, you can call yourself a witch. Totally don't buy the, all that. Um, I, I know this to be true, but no, no. I don't believe that's the way things are anymore. And he goes on to address that in the next paragraph, which I'm, I'm really there for. Um, yeah, it, that has not been the way that I, I have been taught. I've been taught through what he states here in the, the next one, uh, which I'll read now. Eclectic witches often state that only the goddess and God can make you a witch and your initiation is a personal matter between you and them. Kind of agree, kind of don't. Um, because you don't have to be a pagan to be a witch. You don't have to believe in deities to be a witch. Um, but kind of agree, kind of don't. This one I do agree with. You can train from books and initiate yourself when you feel you are ready. Many witches of the world are self-initiated. Self-initiation has its ups and downs. The freedom and personal expression is wonderful, but lack of face-to-face -face mentor can be tough. Eclectics often study with many teachers, classes, and traditions, but forge their own path. Totally love that. Excuse me. I have just a little itchy nose there. Somebody's fur, maybe? I don't know. She's adorable and looking at me, so I have to pet. Um, but I love that he points us out that that is a valid way is, you know, being a self-initiated, uh, you know, being the one to forge your own way and whatnot. Hey, you got on camera a little bit. Okay. Now she's over on her little kitty condo. I have this little tiny kitty condo that sits right next to the desk. Probably mentioned it before. But she will sit on there the entire time that I'm making a video or editing or whatnot. So, except now that she calls me a liar and jumps down. Anyway, yeah, love my familiar. Um, but yes, I love that self-initiation is becoming a thing that people are acknowledging. And to go back to something that I had a conversation with my friend Kelly. I mentioned her a couple times in these videos. Um, I don't think I have the book in here. I think it's in another room. Um, whenever I talked to her about how people viewed Silver Raven Wolf's, um, uh, Book of Shadows, the Solitary Witch, um, I talked to her about that, 
And I said, well, you know, some people call her Fluffy Bunny. And I, I kind of don't like the term, you know, sometimes it's something that you can, you know, say, yeah, I'm a Fluffy Bunny. But kind of hate that term. And she was like, she's one of those ones that she has read that book from cover to cover. Every single word she's, you know, done the, the exercises, all that stuff. And she's more pagan than she is witch. Like, she she will honor goddess and god in her own way. But she doesn't really practice uh, witchcraft at all. But whenever I talk to her about this, she said, you know what? That's, for some of us, all we had to learn from. And that's what I was taught from, is from reading this type of material and knowing, hey, this is a thing that speaks to me. And she she made it a point of saying, you know, this is what we had at the time. Where we grew up, I grew up out in Pennsylvania where she's still at, um, out towards Pittsburgh area, about an hour outside of Pittsburgh. And we didn't have local covens, and we didn't really have the resources to find them back in the early aughts. You know, and even now, Witchbox isn't around anymore. I guess uh, meetups or... Uh, what, there's a meetup website that you can go to that you can meet fellow pagans and whatnot. There's a lot more resources out there now than there were at the time. And not only that, we were in high school. And it's like, okay, you're a high school student and you want to learn about witchcraft. And there's people that you don't know on the internet, which is already scary enough to meet them. But there's a group of older individuals talking about witchcraft that you want to go meet as a high school student sounds a little sketchy let's um i need an adult that type of thing there's times now that it's like okay i'm gonna go meet somebody i need somebody else with me but yeah it, from a safety aspect i totally understand her her way of saying you know i wouldn't have gone out and met anybody and you know asked to learn their practice and books were the only thing that we had at the time to learn uh so i'm really appreciative that you know self initiations is recognized in this book here because this is this is how we how we learned especially early on i didn't have internet growing up books were how you did things but anyway Enough of that tangent. I think I spent way too long on that tangent. Um, let's see. Next is Magical Record Keeping, which I love a good Book of Shadows. If you have a Book of Shadows um, video out there that I have not seen, please just like raise your hand in the comments and I'll go to your channel and watch it. I love Book of Shadow flip throughs. I can sit there all day and have sit, sat there all day going through uh, videos of people flipping through their Book of Shadows. Anyway, he states, one of the key ingredients to which is introspection. Uh, such work is facilitated if you have a record to look back on to see where you were, where you are, and where you hope to be. Okay, that was a lot harder to read than what it should have been. Uh, now, one thing is, I, I don't write fast enough for my, my ideas to flow out and whatnot. I have my journal over there that I said I was going to write in, you know, every single day of 2021, and it has, like, four entries in it. This is the freaking 22nd that I'm filming this, and it only has, like, four entries from this year. It's in, insane that I have not kept up with this. And it's something that I do every year. I, I try to say, oh, I'm going to, uh, this year I'm going to do a journal entry every every single day. Yeah, and it doesn't happen. Um, however, one thing that I can do is I can make quick little videos. I can tweet something out about how I'm feeling, what I'm, 
what I'm thinking, or I have a tendency sometimes to just pull out any notebook and start writing my free flowing thoughts uh, down on, on the page. And that will be like a journal entry for me. I won't necessarily put it in the actual journal where it's supposed to be, but this is something that I tend to do. Uh, steno books um, are my friends. Um, the yellow legal pads are my friends. Excuse me, I got sniffles. I hope it's not COVID. Pretty sure it's not. Just saying. I, I tend to get sniffles whenever I record for too long. Anyway, don't know why. Don't know. Anyway, one one thing that I've noticed is that when, whenever it comes to my magical practice, that making videos is actually a way that I record my my progress. Um, especially whenever I do videos like whenever I did videos for Pagan Perspective and I can go through there and I can see the growth in my practice over the period of 10 years of doing videos on that channel just about every single week I can see the progression in my practice and I I am there for it I look back on the first video that I made for the Pagan Perspective and I didn't realize it until I watched that video. It didn't dawn on me that it was 10 years, one month to the day. And the wedding that I went to that is spoken of in that video was the wedding for a friend of mine in 2014 that uh, she died in 2014. And I am so glad that that is there, out there on the internet. That it's something that I can attach myself to, to that moment in time. And I know that record keeping as far as in a written form is a more substantial, uh, tactile way of doing it. But there's something about being able to just say your thoughts that is a little bit more powerful for me. Anyway. I gotta be moving on on this one because we got a lot of ground to cover and I'm already at like 40 minutes here. Okay, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna try to quit going on these random tangents here. If you don't keep a magical record now is the time to start. A journal is a place for you to write your write about your day, your events in your life, and how you feel and think. No one has uh, no one has to read it but you. You might surprise yourself to borrow an idea from Julia Cameron's uh, The Artist's Way. And I kind of want to do this. Um, it's called The Artist's Way, A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity. Matter of fact, I am going to, in my book, circle this and write Get This Book. Yes. Because then I can come back to this and find it. Because it's it's literally in big words. Get this book. Anyway. So. Um, and in that one, he he goes on to say, uh, write at least three pages a day, either in, in the morning or before bed. I would prefer before bed. Um, make the commitment to yourself uh, to do this every day. If you can't think of anything to write... Um, fill three pages, uh, enough to fill three pages. I can't, you know, write down, I can't think of what to write. And I'm paraphrasing this paragraph here because I want to kind of get through it quickly. Eventually you will get bored and start writing about your life. You can't, and you can't write every day about your life without examining what is in balance and what is out of balance. Such interesting introspection will urge you to bring balance harmony and happiness to your life if you skip a day don't beat yourself up but start again and reaffirm your commitment to continue the act of journaling um, the act of journaling 
can be life changing. I'm sorry, I'm getting uh, alerts on CNN alerts. Sorry, I get distracted easily. This is normally something I would cut out, but anyway, moving on to the next paragraph. We'll, you will also need to keep a magical record. This is important. Witches and wizards of old were known for their spell books, grimoires, and dusty tomes of magic. Witches keep a book of shadows, a ritual book used by Garnarians and Alexandrians, hand copied from the high priest or high priestess to initiate or to initiate. Uh, over the years, spells, meditations, and other formation and other information are added to it, making the information more personal. For eclectic witches, the Book of Shadows is a magical journal filled with their own rituals, spells, and experience. You will be recording your experiences from subse subsequent exercises and meditations. Later, you will write out and record spells, potions, and symbols from your practice. So this is actually something that I <clears throat> want to start doing because... Let's just face it. At least, maybe I should just face it, because it's my book. This is my Book of Shadows. I love my Book of Shadows. I think it's pretty. It has the Triquetra there. It has uh, a couple third-class relics on there. I think it's pretty. I think it's nice. Okay. But let's face it. I am only... that far into this book okay I have a lot more that I should be writing in this book okay so that's something that I should start doing more often than I have been and one thing that really gets me is for me a book of shadows needs to be nice and pretty and and be something that can be handed down for generations and whatnot and that's not really the case um a grimoire, I can understand. A grimoire is just a collection of spells and rituals and whatnot. But a book of shadows should be more personalized. Um, so yes, maybe maybe I do need to start doing that a lot, a lot more, writing down my thoughts and feelings and whatnot about rituals and and whatnot, because I haven't really done that as much in the past, and I really need to start doing that. Because it's something that should be occurring in order for me to look back on and say, hey, this worked. Hey, this did not work. So, anyway. Um, da -da -da -da. Page 64, top of the, uh, of the page here. He says, this is halfway through a sentence. Um, magic works better when you when you are kept silent or when it's kept silent is basically the gist of it thinking about sharing your spells and with others takes away from the energy as it as it tries to manifest your will visualize an act of magic send as sending out a ball of energy i love this analogy and this is why i underlined it this ball will go out into the universe to do whatever you told it to do Talking about that ball calls it back. Some of the energy comes back to you, unfulfilled. If you talk back too much, you sap the energy of the ball and sabotage your spell. This is the equivalent of saying, go do that. Oh, come here for a second. Wait, why haven't you done that yet? You know, it, it's the constant back and forth of... You know, hi, Jelly. Yes. It would be like me telling Jelly to go fetch her wooby, a, a, a treat that she she likes, a little toy that she likes. We called her wooby. It would be like me telling her to do that, but also to come here to chase laser laser light. You know, she will never get to the wooby because I keep on, you know, taunting her with the laser light. And that is very similar to talking about your own spell work and your own um your your own practice and what you're doing in that practice your own 
craft. Okay, so then he goes into talking about the Witch's Pyramid. He says, the first is Earth and the concept to know. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that the first would be air, and that would be to know, but that is in my witch's pyramid, not necessarily everybody else's, and that works for me, um, because to me, I start at the east where air is, and that's what makes sense, and that's, uh, that's where the sun comes up, that's where the day starts, you know, from the east. Um, when, a, if you are a, a Mason, uh, everything, it happens, the entirety of the head of a Masonic Lodge is in the east of, of the Lodge setting. So, to me, everything starts in the east. And that is air. And that is where my to know is. So... I disagree with him on that one. That that is Earth. Um, let's see. This is your clear intention. You must know what you want before you, you can make it happen. I agree. Most importantly, you must know yourself and and your true will, knowing the why behind what you do, knowing what you're doing, and knowing. Um, how you want it to manifest being specific earth is the element of physicality and and practicality agreed all real world things fall into the realm of earth like health money and home agreed that is also a reason that i put it very last because things manifest and eventually become physical and practical um and not as a first thing. Second point is to will, the fire element. Agreed. Um, you have a strength of will to manifest your clear intention. Without proper will, magic cannot work. Agreed. Self-esteem and self-knowledge are keys to bolstering your will. Agreed. Fire is, is your willpower, your passion, and drive. Fire guides the way. To me, I, I do agree with all this. Um, I would also add in fire forges the way. Uh, again, being somebody who is a metallurgist, fire is something that, that forges through the thought. Um, that you can draw something through it and you can kind of make it tougher. Uh, through the forging process, uh, through your will, um, you can forge it through. Anyway, um, third point is to dare, and he says it's the air element, which I disagree. You dare to actually do magic and follow it up with action. I do agree with that. You have faith that it will manifest. Agreed. You have the belief that it is possible. Agreed. Air is the power of the mind, logic, communication, and creativity. Agreed. That's why I put that as the to know. Just, just me. Maybe. I don't know. Um, fourth point is to keep silent and relates to water. Disagree. Um, no. Now, um, to dare, I would put it as the water element. Um, yeah. Anyway, water is emotions and myst um, the mystical and unknown, the top point of the pyramid. Okay. So, to keep silent. Um, I would put that as the fire element because inside, or I mean, as the earth element, I'm sorry. Um, because inside the earth it is silent. There is nothing that you can hear when you're like in a cave all by yourself and it's dark and silent and that's how you kind of need to be whenever you're talking about spell work and whatnot, whenever you're discussing this spell work aspect. 
please get off my lap for not right now. Okay. Uh, you're not going to listen. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I would switch uh, water to be the... Um, to Will, yes. Or, I mean, uh, to Dare, I'm sorry. To Dare. Um, Earth to uh, Keep Silent. And to Know would be Air. I think I got all that right. Anyway, let's move on. The top point of the pyramid is the element of spirit. I agree with this. And the Wiccan Wreath don't necessarily agree with that. Oh, excuse me. The spirit aspect, yes, I do agree. Totally do. Um, but whenever it comes into uh, the concept of the Wiccan Reed, not everybody's a Wiccan, so therefore it may not be their their fifth point on the pyramid. Um, the only true rule of Wicca, do what thou will and let it harm none. Jelly, you're going to have to kind of go <laughs> over that way. Thank you. Um, I do agree with parts of the Wiccan Read, and I, I find it wonderful. It is a wonderful piece of, uh, of poetry, and I find it a very valid uh, part of a witch's practice in general. And I think there's parts that we can take from that to definitely use and reflect on in our own practice. However, I don't think it should be the be-all, end-all of uh, a person's practice. And I don't think it should be given as much weight as it is for people that aren't Wiccan. Just putting that out there. Jelly? Stop it. I'm going to hold you like that, and you're going to get irritated, and then you're going to go lay down over there. Thank you. I said no lap. Okay, let's hurry this up here because we're going in on an hour. Uh, I'm going to skip over the mystery school part. Um, just because I want to get to towards the end of the chapter here, and I want to keep this, you know, around an hour. I don't like going over that part. Uh, let's see. He does talk about um, different ways of preparing yourself uh, with purification. He does mention water in here um, and salt, which, hello, holy water. Uh, made a video on that. Go back and check it out. He also mentions candle flames and uh, incense and whatnot. Totally valid. Um, this is one thing that I did want to read. Definitely. Facing your fears, angers, prejudices, and sorrows is part of the introspective process. Showing up in meditations and journal entries. Those that do not serve your highest good need to be cleared, released, and healed. Limiting thoughts and behaviors are first identified and then changed. I kind of wanted to point that out because it is definitely a huge huge part of this is what's called shadow working or you know working with your shadow self uh facing these fears and your prejudices things that you um uh, that you might personally not want to say to yourself is a huge deal whenever we're talking witchcraft um and even just self-development in and of itself um yeah, I, I just wanted to really hit that point because it is a big deal. And sometimes, you know, your prejudices show whenever you don't really think they are or when you don't really think that they're there. Um, so that's something that I think 
more people should um, really do that introspective work during meditations and whatnot. Uh, the last aspect of mystery school is to contact um, is to con is contact with higher will. Higher will is not the choice of ego, but of your spirit, your soul. Higher will guides you to your true purpose in life. It is not your will, but that of the goddess and God. Though magic, or through magic. We exercise our personal will and magical selves in, con in conjunction with divine will. The power of the goddess and God to manifest in our life. It is a partnership with the divine. Through those acts, we come to know the divine will. I don't necessarily, whenever I am uh, casting, I don't necessarily... Um, bring deity always into it because it's not always something that I need deity to do, and it's not always something that I feel that I should have to ask them to do for me or to uh, push it along. Sometimes the spell work that I do, if under my own uh, power, I don't get it there then I should not be, or I should not get it, you know. For instance, if I put forth a spell to get me a million dollars, if I have not put enough magical, or en enough energy, or enough oomph into it, enough intention into it, I shouldn't get it. Um, that See, my thing is, I shouldn't have to rely on Sophia or rely on Christ to push that along to get me the million dollars that I really don't need but just want. If I were to do a spell of something that I want, then I, I would expect my own my own push of energy to be substantial. Otherwise, I don't want it enough. If it's something that I absolutely needed to have happen, um, such as certain things with certain individuals, then yes, I would include Didi in that and have them help push that along uh, in the way they best saw fit. Um, he says here in the Path of Initiation, we're almost done here, guys. You should not be as concerned with the results of your magical power as you are with the lessons the path presents to you. Everyone has uh, psychic or magical abilities. They are inherent in our human makeup, like having eyes, a nose, um, or a mouth. Some will find that they are more talented in certain areas than others. Perfectly said. Love it. Keep it up. Um... And then he goes on on how to u utilize this book in order to make it last for a year and a day, which is a typical span of time for um, magical initiation uh, time frame. Uh, and yeah, that's it for this chapter. We ended on at, at the top of page 69, giggity. Um, but then after that, we have an exercise, our first exercise of the book, and I'm excited. I have not done this exercise yet. Uh, the thing that I'm going to try to do is, um, I'm going to do a, a the exercises following the chapters. That way, um, in following the airing of this, that way I can discuss it next time. Um, but this is the intention ritual. So I'm going to, for those of you who don't have books, shame on you. You should have one because then you're getting the full picture of, of what's contained in this. The Inner Temple of Witchcraft by Christopher Penzak. See? Look. There it is. Screenshot that, please. Um, so fairly uh, simple ritual. 
He says, step one, get a new white candle, matches, a piece of paper, a black pen, and some black thread. If you like incense or have any other objects that are special to you, like a crystal stone, bowl, or anything else, you can get them out, but they are not necessary. Step two, find a quiet place or a quiet spot to work where others will not disturb you. Step three, on a small piece of paper, uh, write out your intentions for this work. Do, n do you see, I'm sorry, do you seek to be a witch? Learn witchcraft or just know more. If you are comfortable, yeah, if you are comfortable calling on the goddess and God, do so. If not, you can address it in whatever divine force you are comfortable using, such as God, Great Spirit, Tao, or Universe. And then he has an example. Um, he says, for example, I, state your name, ask in the name of the goddess and God for aid in my studies of witchcraft. I intend to complete this work successfully within one year and become a witch if this is correct for my highest good. I ask to be open to all experiences and understand all lessons given to me, so mode it be. Very simple. Love it. Step four. Hold the white candle. Think about spirituality. Think about divinity and the god or the goddess and god. Invite them into your life and reaffirm your bond with them. Light it, light the candle. If you have incense, light them now. Spend a few moments reflecting. This is step five. Spend a few moments reflecting on the definition, history, and qualities of the witch. Think about where witchcraft has been and where you hope to go with it. Step six. Read your intention slip out loud. Then roll it up like a scroll and tie it with a black thread, binding it together and sealing your intention. One note I, I will have here, whenever you're rolling it, roll it to you. Things are coming to you. If you roll things away from you, you're sending them out. Um, I guess that all depends on what you write on the slip of paper, but something to keep in mind in general practice. Uh, keep the sum the paper someplace special where you will not lose it. You will use the slip as part of your initiation ritual in a year. In a later chapter, you will build a meditation altar. You can then keep the candle and an intention slip on the altar. And then he has homework. So, I'm going to go through the homework and then we're going to wrap it up here and I'm going to just post this pretty much like it is. Just, just saying. So, he says homework. Get one or two blank books to use as a daily journal and book of shadows. If you choose to keep them separately, two books. If you, if you choose to keep them in one, um, I will say that this is, um, a staples journal that I, that I got really nice haven't even used this yet but very nice uh lined journal that you can get at staples and i think they're like i want to say 10 bucks or something like that there's the inside cover isn't it pretty but i haven't used this one yet i have one just like it uh over there but it is 400 pages um it's by markings and you can also find them at markings.org or no markings.com i'm sorry um, and it's very comfortable feeling. It looks nice. It's kind of stylish. Um, so I would suggest like if you don't already have a notebook, a simple composition book works fine. Um, but go ahead and get one of those because I'm going to be trying to do these exercises and doing these reflections with you guys. So yeah, let's do that. Next part of homework. Daily journal, write three pages a day. That's going to be difficult for me because it's hard for me to write in one location for three pages. Like my journal is sitting over there and 
I have a hard time finding the time to write three pages in one sitting. So I may have to break that up into different times of the day and whatnot. But writing three pages a day. Number three for homework. Look for any potential study partners. Hey, you guys. Uh, number four. And that that's, I'm being literal. You guys are my study partners. Um, num number four for homework. Exercise one, the intention ritual, which I have already uh, talked to you guys about. Perform and record your feelings and experiences about this ritual in your own or in your journal slash book of shadows. So there's a page worth easily. And the, uh, the last part is set your study schedule. So when are you going to choose to study this book and get into doing the lessons and whatnot? Um, I think we already have one part of our homework done, which is Saturday, or for me, seeming like Fridays, that I'm doing these videos of Widgie Book Study. So, yay! We already have one part of our homework done. I already got a blank book. So, yay, I got two of those done. Um, so, and, and we already found our, our study partners. So, that's three of the five things, right? So, yeah. So, basically, I just have to do the exercise and write about it and do three pages a day. So, let me know where you are on this homework part. part and uh, let me know how you like this chapter. I know it went a little bit too long because it looks like an hour and a quarter has passed and oh my gosh it's going to be long and arduous and uh yeah I i'm not really going to listen to myself say all this stuff back to me so yeah anyway sorry for hitting that um that was chapter four of the inner temple of witchcraft i thought i could get through it a lot quicker than i did but there was a lot of things that came up in my mind thing that had to be discussed this is also by Christopher Benzak, uh, seeing that I didn't mention that just now whenever I said Inner Temple of Witchcraft. Um, next week, we are doing lesson five, or chapter five, which is lesson one, oddly enough. Um, yeah, that, that was weird. And it is called The Magical Mind. And I believe we have... Do we? Do we have another exercise? I can't, I can't see. Oh, we have more assignments. Okay. Yep. 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 We do. It looks like it. Can't wait for it. I will put a link to where you can find this on Amazon in the description below. So if you don't have your copy, do go check it out. You can also get it on Kindle. So if you have uh, the Kindle app on your iPad or on your phone or uh, if you have a Kindle it's themselves, uh, you can read it on a Kindle if that is more comfortable and more financially feasible for you. Um, so there's that. You can get it in a physical copy like I have here if that is also something that you would like to do. Um, I rather have the physical copies because if you can't tell, I like the tactile experience of books. So, yeah, there's something about the tactile experience that I really, really love. And there's my ring light, which... I don't really like the way I look with it, but anyway, um, so that's all that I have for Witchy Book Study Saturday. Join me tomorrow for Christo Pagan Sun Christo Paganism Sunday, where I will be discussing the topic of sin and what sin is and whatnot. I touched on a little bit of it in the Table Talk Thursday video, not this past one, I think the one before. Um, so yeah, we're going to be discussing sin in a little bit deeper of a context and, uh, we're going to go with, with that. So, uh, join me tomorrow for Crystal Paganism Sunday and I will see you guys then. Until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye-bye.